As you know, water is one of the most important commodities to being a prepper or for survival. It could be the very most, maybe shelter first, but you obviously have to have water and having water coming in during crap hits the fan is vitally important. It literally is life or death. And you can't depend on city water. It may shut down. You can't depend on your well. You have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe you don't even have like a creek or a stream nearby. What do you do? Well, a lot of people like to use rainwater catchment and it's a fantastic alternative, by the way, but you must know there are certain things you need to be aware of if you're going to be setting up a rainwater catchment system at your house. First off, you want to make sure that at least right now, legally speaking, you're allowed to do it because some states don't allow it. I mean, crap hits the fan, some government bureaucrats not going to be coming to your door and saying, uh-oh, you know what? With the apocalypse happening, you can't catch rainwater. But there are certain things right now you want to set it up. For example, you know, we lived in Colorado for years and while we lived there, there was no rainwater catchment allowed. And then they changed the laws. It's like you can have a few barrels now and up to a certain amount of gallons, et cetera, or for a single resident. So there are some laws there. You need to make sure you know the laws of your place as well. Even if you don't plan on using it now, but you have it set up in case crap hits the fan, obviously you may have somebody pounding on your door. You know how those, how those things go. All right, so some other things you need to know. Setting up a rainwater catchment, you have to do it the right way. It very well may save your life because if you have certain things coming into your rainwater, like contamination, obviously that's a problem. And the contamination isn't always necessarily from like your roof or the air. It could actually come from your container. Because when you talk about the container or maybe just a barrel you're going to catch it in, there's two things you need to be aware of. First off, your barrel, you can't have light going into it. And what I mean by that is if the barrel is like translucent, you know, allows light to go through, it will put energy into that system and allow more organisms to grow. So it has to be blocking out any type of sunlight. Secondly, you have to look at the material too, because you can get a really nice dark black barrel, but who knows what that barrel is made for? Is it food grade? Is it water grade? Will it leach chemicals into the water is something you need to be aware of because obviously you're going to make it so that water does not come into your system. I mean, your system is like your body. Even if you're using that barrel for watering your garden, personally, I don't want those chemicals coming from the barrel going into my plants either. So you have to look at the material for that. Lots of different things you can do, by the way. I like, for example, those really giant IBC totes. But again, they are translucent. They do allow light coming through. That's something you have to be aware of. But contamination, obviously, from the barrel is something you need to be aware of. But contamination from other sources, too. All right, picture this. Your roof, it's been sitting there for days. Wind blowing on it. Dirt, debris, garbage in the atmosphere is all getting on your roof and resting there. And we're not talking about things that are, practically speaking, harmless like pollen. I mean, maybe you have pollen allergies, but that's still probably not going to kill you. But things that are on the roof, you do want to be aware of. And if you suddenly get a big rainfall, that rain's going to wash down the roof and wash all that stuff right into your barrel. Mm, good drinking water right there. So I know a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll have like a valve set up for their barrels. So when it rain starts really hard, they'll simply just take the first little bit of it and put it in the ground before they put it in their barrel. And that's smart. But in reality, you know that the rain coming down isn't going to wash every particulate into the ground first. It's going to be some will always break free later and end up in your barrel. Big particles like, like pine straw or leaves or the neighbor's cat or something that washes down, if you simply put a screen there, the screen will block it and that works out well. But the particles going into the water is something you want to be aware of. Again, they may not be toxic, but they might be. You never know. And that's just stuff from your roof because the second way contamination may end up in your barrel is the atmosphere itself. The atmosphere is full of all kinds of craziness. You know, we see that the government's putting stuff in the atmosphere at times. And when the rain comes down, it literally washes the atmosphere, puts it on your roof and puts it right in your barrel, in your drinking water, so to speak. Now, if you are using your barrel for your garden only, I mean, the rain's hitting your garden too. So how much chemical difference it is, is it catching it in the barrel then putting it in the garden? Probably not much. But if you're gonna be drinking that, you wanna be able to treat that water. And I don't mean treat that water specifically for big debris or treat it for um, even just bacterial agents. That's something too. Bacterial agents are easy. You can use those little tablets. You can use some bleach and stuff in there. No, it's the chemicals we have to worry about. And there are no chemical treatment liquids or drops you put in that water that's going to stop chemicals from coming into your barrel drinking water. Keep that in mind. So you're going to have to have some kind of filtration system, more specifically, more appropriately, you want to have some kind of activated charcoal system. I know a lot of people use like a Berkey and that does work well. Putting so many particulates in the bottom of your Berkey may be a problem. So if you want to run it through a cheesecloth first or something like that will work. 
but you have to have ad activated charcoal because if you don't have that, then the chemicals may leach through too. Again, I don't want to be drinking a lot of chemicals that have been on my roof or been in the atmosphere because you have no idea what's been up there. Okay, so it washes down, take care of the contaminants. Now what? You need to be able to have that water coming into your house. And obviously the barrel, we're talking about, let's say it's a 55 gallon drum with a weight of water that's getting close to 500 pounds. And you're not gonna simply just take it and pour it. You know, obviously that's not gonna work. So you have to have a way to get that water in. You can put it on a stand. Some people do that. Just make sure the stand's able to hold 500 pounds and then simply just put a little spigot in the bottom. Um, however, you can also get a siphon pump. Like in this picture right here, you can see August and Farm sells a whole setup. This is not for rainwater catchment. This is simply just for water. And here you'll see it has a siphon pump on top. But notice, look at this. It also has specifically chemicals to treat it. And again, those chemicals are really good to inactivate it. So bacterial agents won't be in your water, which is good, but it will not stop chemicals. On that same note, I want you to understand when you talk about chemicals being in there, let's talk about fallout for just a second. Fallout having a consistency of sand or glass. If it goes into a body of water, it'll fall down to the body of, in the body of water, which is great. So if we're talking about like you are in city water and the city water comes from a reservoir nearby, the fallout will actually move quickly to the bottom of that reservoir. And when they pull the water off, you know, pull all the water out of the, out of the reservoir, they're pulling it mostly toward the top. And so often you'll have after a nuclear event, the fallout going in the water is not going to actually make that water, you know, like in an emergency, you can drink it. It's not a problem. In fact, the news, not the news, but like the alerts will tell you if it's okay to drink the water or not. But what about your barrel? Let's say you have some fallout on the roof and the rain comes down and washes that fallout into the barrel. Can you drink the water? It's dangerous. I mean, here's why. If you're scooping it from the top of the barrel, there's a 99.9% .9 chance there's nothing in that water, probably even greater. It, the water is going to be fine. The radio doesn't turn, the water doesn't turn, practically speaking, radioactive. It does become heavy water in small amounts, but that's nothing to worry about. And since the fallout falls to the bottom, that glass of water will practically, in all intents and purposes, be good. But you standing next to that barrel with that fallout in the bottom, that's really, really bad news. So if you can find a way to make it, so if there is fallout, having it so your barrels do not collect that water that takes that fallout in, that's your best bet. Because when the rainwater washes away a lot of that fallout over the next couple weeks, the barrel itself should be good because there's no fallout in the bottom of the barrel. Again, the, the fallout's not going to turn that barrel radioactive per se. It's just you don't want to stand next to that barrel and catch the water because that radioactivity is going inside of you and you're getting a nice healthy zap from that fallout. And that's obviously something you do not want to have. So keep that in mind when it comes to fallout. All right, again, August Farms has a nice unit you can look at. I'll link it below. But rainwater catchment is an excellent advantage as far as trying to get water during rough times because there's lots of places that you're obviously not going to get water from other locations. And so therefore, rainwater catchment may be your only option. I hope this video helps. Any questions, obviously, put them in the comments below. And we'll see you next time.